few years back I made quite a few of these digestive biscuit courses to take to my craft fairs and they were quite a popular item. I was recently asked if I had the vectors for them but I'd lost a lot of files after a workshop fire that I had a few years back. So I thought I'd have a go at redesigning them using Vectric and then if anybody wants to have a go at making some it's just a case of following the video and machining them to suit. I'll be using oak as it looks more biscuit like and these tend to look the right proportion at around 110mm in diameter and about 13mm thick. Any thicker and they start to look like crumpets. But once the vectors are made then in theory any size is possible by transforming the group vectors. One thing to note though is that the machining is so fine that the wood needs to be perfectly level to the CNC. So before machining I suggest doing a skim pass over the material to ensure that it's level on the top surface. This is easily done by using the pocket hole tool in Vectric and removing just enough material so that the top surface of the wood is flat in relation to the CNC. And if you cut following the grain direction it ensures less visible machining lines. Once your piece is secured to the CNC and it's skimmed flat it's time to design the coaster. Now I'll be using Aspire but I'm pretty sure a V-carve will work just fine. Perhaps anyone with V-carve can confirm this is the case or not. So the first thing I do after opening Vectric is click and create a new file. Job type is single sided. Job size for me will be 171mm by 171mm as that's roughly the size of the wood that I have already and the thickness will be 13mm after skimming flat. Z0 will be material surface and as with all my projects XY datum 00. Modeling and appearance I can sort out later if needs be but then I click OK. Now at first glance the design looks fairly complex but I've already worked out where everything needs to go and I've used a few easy techniques to help sight all the text and the vectors. The course is going to be 110mm in diameter. So first job is to create the circle vector by clicking on draw circle in the create vector section. With X and Y at 0 select 110mm diameter and click create. We now have our 110mm circular vector for the coaster. Now with the draw circle window still open we can add a few more vectors to help aid our design for later on. So I'll add another circle vector at 90mm and then another one at 76.25mm and click close. We can also add a few more vector shapes to assist in our design which I've previously worked out to save a lot of messing around for anybody who wants to have a go at doing this themselves. So first of all it's just a simple case of clicking on draw a rectangle from the create vectors window. X will be minus 22.5 and Y will be 0. Corner type it will be square and a width of 15mm and height of 17.5mm and click create. With the window still open let's create another rectangle this time, X and Y at 0 with a width of 30 and a height of 52. Then click create and close the window. Next we can add four vertical guides by clicking within the ruler at the side and dragging them into the main window. Right click the mouse and select the new position to be 21.5mm then apply and close. Repeat this with the second guide, but this time input minus 21.5mm. Repeat this process for another pair of guides, one at 39.5mm and another one at minus 39.5mm. With all our guides and shapes in place we can now start adding the vectors that will be used for machining. So let's go back to the draw circle tool and select 2.5mm diameter. Then all we're going to do is hover the cursor over each point of the squares until it registers, then we simply click the left mouse button to add a circle. After adding 8 circles, click close and deselect by pressing escape. We can now remove these squares by highlighting them and pressing delete. Next highlight the 4 circles in the middle and we're going to select the mirror selected objects tool in the transform object section. Ensure flip about job center is selected and create a mirror copy is too. 
Then hit Flip horizontally. Then click Close and deselect the vectors. There's one more set of circles to add. So to do this, click back to the draw circle, which should still be set at 2.5mm. And for X, input 0, and for Y, input 45mm. Then click Create and should now see a circle added to the top of the 90mm diameter vector that we drew earlier. Click on Close and select this new circle. And then press Shift and click on the 90mm circle vector to highlight both circles. In the Offset and Layout section, click the Copy Along Vectors icon. I select Copy Object, then Number of Copies 12, making sure Align Objects to Curve is selected. Then I press Copy and Close. Now that gives us all of our circle vectors, but you may need to click on the small circle that we previously copied and delete one if there's two copies there. Now select every single circle by pressing the left mouse button and holding shift and press G to group them all together. We can now delete the 90mm circle vector. Double check that every little circle is grouped and if you miss any just make sure to add them to the grouping. To add the text, we need to click on the Draw the Text icon. Now you can see the figures that I use, but make sure to type in Digestive in capitals using the True Type Arial font at 10mm and send to the text by either dragging it or pressing F9, then click on Close. Now the letters need spacing out a little bit better, or kerning as they say. To do this, you have the text highlighted and click the Edit Text Spacing icon. Now when you position the cursor between the two letters, the cursor changes from showing a T to showing a plus sign, underneath the letters V and A with two arrows in between. If you press your left mouse button, the letters move closer together, but if you press shift in the left mouse button, you see the arrows change direction, which forces the letters apart. Now this comes down to personal preference, but as long as you space them evenly and try to line up digestives to the guidelines that we placed earlier, that'll work out just fine. Once you're happy, just hit escape to deselect. Last thing to add is the words whole wheat. So it's back to the draw text and in capitals type in whole wheat, but this time text height is just 3.75mm. Then click close. With the text highlighted, shift click on the 76.25mm circle vector and click on the text on a circle icon in the create vector section. Again you can see the selected option on my screen, but make sure to select text position on a curve and using the text spacing slide bar, adjust the text until it's roughly touching the guidelines that we placed earlier, then click close. Then we repeat this procedure, but this time we select text on the other side and drag the text around to the top of the circle vector and again, place close to the guides by altering the text spacing. When you're happy, click close and make sure that everything is deselected. At this point we can now remove all the guides and unwanted vectors, but again that's just personal preference. Now all that's left to do is create the toolpaths. I can run through my toolpaths, but this could vary depending on what tooling that you may use. I'm first going to group the whole wheat text together. Now I've done lots of different experiments with these, and what I find works best for my tooling is that I use a 90 degree trend V bit for everything but the profile cuts. But because the cutter has a slight flat spot, 
When selecting the start depth, I have to start it at 0.3mm for the whole week text or it doesn't define the text enough. But this is where you're going to have to experiment and it's better to undercut and then increase if needs be later. The same applies for the digestive text. With the digestive text, 0.2mm is enough for the definition that I need. But this is why the alt needs skimming perfectly flat at the beginning or the dots in the text will all look different. For the dots I use the drilling tool path and I set the cut depth at 0.8mm. For my profile cut I use my 8mm down spiral from Wheel and Tools. Don't forget to add tabs to prevent the piece from flying off the CNC machine. Once all the toolpaths are saved, it's time to machine the piece. Once machined and the tabs are removed, I use a small round over cutter to curve the edges taking small amounts off at a time. This is probably the riskiest part of the process. This isn't something that you need to do as you can simply sand the edges, but I find this gives it a more authentic look. If you are going to use a router to round over the sides then please don't assume that I'm using the correct or the safest techniques, but this is what works for me. Then once sanded I give it a couple of coats of kitchen oil, it's placed on the drying rack and then it's left to dry. Prior to making the videos on YouTube, I worked as a firefighter for nearly 20 years, serving my community and helping to save lives and promote the fire safety message. Unfortunately, an accumulation of many upsetting scenes became too much for my mind to cope with, and after years of failed therapy, I was retired from the service on the grounds of ill health and signed off medically from any employment. To keep myself busy, both body and mind, I developed an interest in woodworking and car mechanics and with already having a hobby in filming and music, I combined my interest and started making videos here on YouTube, filming, editing and composing my own music for my woodworking and car restoration channels Smugwood and Smugwood Mini. Unfortunately, to produce such videos comes at a price, and with minimal funds after being retired from employment, I've turned to Patreon to see if there's additional support out there which could allow me to continue making the woodworking and car restoration videos. In return for support, there are various levels which are explained in more depth at the Patreon link below, but includes the chance to win one of my YouTube projects made throughout the year, 
and also inclusion into random prize draws open to patrons only. In addition, I'd like to thank everybody who already subscribes to my channels, or watches, comments, likes and shares them as it all goes to help support my channels, and for that I'm really appreciative. It's my hope that I can continue making the videos for the foreseeable future. Thanks once again for your continued support.